Equipment in this game can be very confusing at times, and the gem crafting system can seem completely random to new players. In this video, I want to showcase how to properly take advantage of the gem crafting system for the best possible gems, as well as what the best gems and equipment you want to use to have the most success in this game. As a preface, there are spoilers on the 7th party member in this video, so please refrain from watching until you are past that point if you do not wish to be spoiled. And as always, if you enjoy and find guide content like this useful, be sure to subscribe to the channel and look forward to future guides because it does help out quite a bit. So the first thing about gem crafting to keep in mind is that party affinity affects how good it will be. The reason I made the affinity grinding guide yesterday is because that can be considered an important prerequisite in order to make sure you're always getting the best gems possible. If your party affinity is not as good, that's okay. I'll still show off a method you can use to increase your odds of getting the best gems, but you will likely require more crystals to do it. The higher affinity you have between your party, the more likely your other party members besides the shooter and engineer will help refine the gems and make them stronger. The next thing to know is you can refine gems by collecting ether crystals from the field or from enemy drops. It doesn't really matter how strong these crystals are, you only need two of each kind of crystal to get two versions of the best possible gem if you have strong party affinity. So once you get crystals with traits you want, you'll be able to start crafting the perfect gems. Before doing any gem crafting, make sure to save. Sometimes the game will troll you and you won't get what you need, so save scumming can be an effective countermeasure to ensure you aren't wasting a lot of time grinding crystals when you don't want to. So I plan to talk about most of the best gems after covering crafting itself, but before doing crafting I want to show the full process of collecting gems and all of that as well. The first really good gem I want to discuss is Debuff Resist. Debuff Resist with a maxed out level 6 gem gives 100% resistance to all debuffs. If you plan to fight the strongest super boss, this is a must-have because it gives immunity to his instant death spike. It's also just extremely helpful everywhere else because it's applied to every annoying debuff in the game. And if you are wondering why I'm fighting these Soros enemies, it is because these are the enemies that actually drop those debuff resist crystals. The only other two enemies that drop this are Avalanche Odyssey, a level 120 super boss, and the Magnificent Digitalist, which is another Soros enemy in the forest that has a topple counter spike, which can be a lot more annoying to deal with than just fighting these Soroses over and over. So once you get the crystals you want, you can go into the crafting menu. The shooter will give a bonus effect to the crafting process, and the engineer will have different strengths and weaknesses concerning the type of flames you get. A gentle flame fills up the cylinder gauge, which lets you convert crystals that did not get refined into ether cylinders. A medium flame will increase the quality of all current traits being crafted, and a strong flame will increase the trait of one trait being crafted. Medium flames are mostly useless, but gentle and strong flames are going to be the main things we want here. So how it works is that based on affinity between two party members, you have a certain number of turns. Each turn allows you to get a strong, weak, or medium flame. This means you have more chances to refine the crystal. If you have high affinity with other party members, they can also jump in and help refine the crystals as well. So when you are crafting, if a quality gets over 100%, you will get a gem on the same level of the crystals you used. If a quality gets over 200%, you will get a gem of a level higher than the crystals you used. And if you can push the quality over 300%, you will get two crystals of the highest value of the gem one level higher. This is called Mega Heat, and it's going to be our goal when crafting gems. So the one thing you'll notice about crystals is that they normally have two or more traits. This can make getting the trait we actually want to turn into a gem difficult to get refined properly. That is why the first step to crafting a perfect gem is going to be converting the trait we want into two ether cylinders. The best way I've found to do this is use Sharla as a shooter and Ricky as the engineer. This setup ensures you get a lot of gentle flames and the trait you want is less likely to go over 100%. If you have really good party affinity, you can throw a lot of traits in the same craft, but if you have low, you want to get the cylinder as close to 100% as possible without actually passing it. And like I said, I do recommend saving between getting good cylinders that you want, because sometimes the trait will go over 100%, and that can actually be very annoying at times. After doing that, you can just repeat the process again, and you can get another good cylinder. And this will allow you to have two ether cylinders with only one trait on them. Okay. Now, as you can imagine, this means every party support and every strong flame will go towards making this gem stronger. And that is, of course, going to allow you to get the highest chance of getting a Mega Heat, and the highest chance of getting two really good gems to use for your playthrough. So once you use Charlotte and Ricky to get the two cylinders you want to craft, you can put them together, and depending on the strength of it, you can have like pretty strong cylinders here, and if you have low party affinity, that's what I recommend doing, as I said. And then I like to use Shulk as Shooter and Ryan as the Engineer, because Ryan has a really good chance at strong flames, and with the party support, with the single trait we have, you have an easy chance of getting Mega Heat, as you can see here. I was well above the threshold of 391%. 
So I get two debuffers as six, and as you might imagine, they both have 100% chance to re increase resistance to all debuffs. You can pretty much use Charla and Ricky and then Shulk and Ryan every time if you want to, and you'll always get the optimal gems as long as you know what you're doing. It's pretty simple and pretty straightforward, once you actually get the hang of it, that is. And it's going to allow you to some craft some pretty powerful gems that you can use later on into the game. Gem slots are basically everything later on into the game, as the gems can be very powerful and give you really good effects. If you have really strong party affinity, you can put multiple traits in the same crafting process to give you better odds of getting cylinders and also getting more cylinders of the stuff you actually want. So in this case, lock on resist and aggro up aren't that useful, so I don't care about them being high, but back attack plus, attack plus, and agility plus up are all very good gems. So I can get three cylinders of these all at the same time. And once you get the two the quality you want into two different cylinders, you can once again just use Shulk and Ryan, and more likely than not, if you have good party affinity, you'll get a mega heat. Make sure to save beforehand just in case, but it's really not all that hard to get, even if you have a pretty low percentage on your gems. Or your cylinders. And every time you get Mega Heat, it'll always crack into two, and it will always give you the absolute maximum amount that you can get for the gem. So all around, this is a great way for getting late game gems to their maximum potential with wasting the least amount of time possible. I think that about covers how to efficiently use gem crafting, so let's get on to the gems themselves and which ones are the best to use. So I already mentioned debuff resist, but another really important gem you're going to want to have is agility up. Agility is a great catch-all stat for both your accuracy and evasion in this game. If you have enough of it, no enemies are going to really be able to hit you very effectively. And you'll have a much easier time hitting enemies that might be higher leveled than you, and you'll be able to hit super bosses with this stuff along with night vision pretty easily no matter what. The easiest way to actually get agility up is to get Colony 6's nature to level 5. And then skip travel to the ether mine entrance and go collect these ether crystal deposits over here. More likely than not, you'll get agility up from this crystal deposit. A maxed out agility up gem will give 50 agility, which is the max amount you can have on a character equipped by gems anyway. This is useful to basically have on everyone once you can get one of these gems. In a similar vein, if you have nature level 5 and colony 6, you can get agility down and also agility up from another gem deposit inside the ether mine itself. Simply skip travel to the drainage control room and you'll able, be able to um, go to an ether crystal deposit pretty close to where you start out at. It's basically going to be the one north of Test Pit 3. If you follow the path I'm following, you can get to it pretty easily. And once you see the wind crystal deposit, you'll be able to get what you need from it. On the subject of gems you can get from ether crystal deposits, if you skip travel to Befalger Tomb and Tefer Cave, you can follow a path to get to the east side of the cave over here and get to that ether crystal deposit you see on the map. This is going to have attack stability gems, or crystals. When refined, these can raise the minimum damage of your auto attack stat by 50%. Since this number is the basis for all damage calculations in the game, this is extremely valuable. You can increase your damage a significant amount, much more than strength up boost by getting one of these gems. In a similar vein, you can also get attack plus from Aether Crystal Deposits in the Bionis interior. You can find those on the lower level near the terminal vein. Attack plus gems can be found from Asara to Lethius also, but you're likely to fight many of later on in the game if you do a lot of quests. Attack plus used to be pretty bad in the original game because of the damage glitch, which essentially meant only your minimum auto attack plus 99 was your true attack stat, but that has been fixed in this game, so attack plus is very, very nice to have because it increases your maximum attack stat by 50%. This can give you some insane damage if you actually get the really high damage rolls to actually use it. And by using both attack stability and attack plus at the same time, you can get a really nice damage ring to just do a bunch of damage to the enemy. It caps out at 50% with just one gem. As far as another good gem you can get in the Bionis interior, if you fight these key micellula or the unique monster known as Officer Robusto, you can get recovery up gems. Now recovery up gems are basically like the crit healing in this game if you link it with certain skills, like Dunman's ability to get 2% health bat when he gets critical hits. Recovery Up essentially lets you get 50% extra healing from all sources when you heal. So this can be from other people using arts on you, from your own healing sources, and everything like that. It's a pretty nice gem to have for safety and just to try to keep yourself healthy as much as possible. And if you like taking a more defensive approach, this is not a bad gem to have. Since it can only be equipped on armor, it's not actually that bad either, since most of the good offensive gems can only be equipped on weapons, as you might imagine. And it's good to just have a good supply of both of them if you want to be really well-rounded all around. So if you skip travel back to Befalger Tomb and take one of the little side paths, you'll eventually run into this unique monster in a cave and his little add-ons that summon from the pods. Killing these enemies will give you crystals that can give you Topple Plus and Paralysis. 
Now, Paralysis is a really good debuff, and it'll apply 20% of the time every time you auto-attack enemies. Basically, if you inflict an enemy with Paralysis, they will have their auto-attack rate reduced to 25%. Now this is great because a lot of enemies' main source of damage is going to be auto-attacks because most likely you'll get a vision for their more dangerous arts or talent arts and stuff like that. So it's a really nice debuff for just pre preventing as much damage as possible on you, and since the add-on spiders will always summon silver chests, you have pretty good odds of getting crystals, but if you don't, then you can save and reload like I end up doing here. Now the other crystal that they can give you is Topple Plus. Topple Plus is a very, very interesting gem. Maxed out, it increases your topple duration by 100% when you use the topple ability. This gem is an important part of an infamous strategy known as topple locking, which can prevent a lot of unique monsters and strong enemies from essentially not being able to do anything against you because you just keep them locked in place by toppling them over and over and keeping them toppled. It's a very good gem to have in your inventory just in case you need it at some points, and I definitely recommend picking it up. Another great weapon gem is Physical Defense Down. You can get this from a thunderstorm in Aerith Sea by killing Bolganon Nebula. Physical Defense Down has a 30% chance of reducing enemy defense by 25% when you hit them with an auto attack. Now lowering enemy physical defense is very useful because it really allows you to maximize your physical damage with physical party members and that's very useful for chain attacks and just doing a lot of damage in general. So it's a very nice debuff and very nice effect if you just want to do as much damage as you possibly can. Now a final must-have gem if you plan on tackling super bosses is going to be Night Vision. Now the crystals for Night Vision only drop from the Ancient Deadala, which is a super boss and can be very difficult to actually beat to get the gem. Luckily, you don't actually need to be maxed out on Night Vision for it to have a good enough effect as long as you have some agility at the same time. So the easiest way to get good Night Gems is Night Vision gems is to just trade with um, Scarlin in the Satoral Marsh. And you can get a Night Vision 5, which will give you about 40% accuracy, which is going to be plenty. Do this a couple of times for all the characters you plan to use, and you should have no issues at all. So here's a checklist of all the pretty good gems you might want to have. There's a couple on here I didn't go over because they're a little bit more niche, but I'll discuss them now. Topple Up gives you more damage to toppled enemies. So if you're using Topple Locking or Topple an enemy in a chain attack, that can be very nice. Back Attack Plus gives you more damage to enemies from behind. It's a little bit niche, but it can be helpful for giving you more damage if you plan on attacking the enemies from behind pretty often. Spike Defense is useful against enemies that have spike damage. It's pretty easy to find. It only maxes out at 75%, so you'll need two anyway, so the level 6 doesn't matter as much. Haste increases your rate of auto attack by 50%. That's good for getting your talent gauge up and good for characters that have a lot of damage with auto attacks. And then Double Attack increases your chance of getting a double attack when you use an auto attack. Essentially, every that means every time you auto-attack, you have 50% chance of attacking twice. This combined with haste can be very useful, especially for a certain character that has a lot of damage with auto-attacks, but we'll get to that in a more specific character guide. Now, the most important thing to remember is that you want to have the maximum amount of gem slots for whatever you're using. Your weapons need to have three gem slots no matter what, and you want all your armor to have gem slots as well. Gems give very important effects that are very powerful, so it's really good to have as much as you possibly can on them. As far as armor itself, just any of the late game armor works pretty well. Gem slots are really the most important thing, and typically you want to limit getting hit as much as possible anyway. And you want to have a weight stat of zero if you can help it on all your characters, and you can do this by linking some of Dunban's skill links to other characters, and you'll be able to just keep your weight stack in check to make sure that's not affecting your agility at all. Overall though, gem slots are the most important thing to remember. As far as specifics, I'll discuss that when I get to character guides. My current setup right now is not something you should necessarily copy. It's not necessarily optimal either. It was just stuff I was doing to beat super bosses for the first time, so keep that in mind as well. But as far as general good stuff, I think I've talked about most of the really good gems. If you want more specific setups, I will get to that later. I think this is giving you a good idea of what gems you want to at least kind of get for later on into the game though. And as such, I don't really see the need to talk about much else. The super bosses aren't really all that difficult to tackle, so you should have a pretty easy time if you're just set up properly and are able to get the gems you need. I'd like to give a special thanks to Nyar Lothotep for showing me how to craft gems when I first got the game, and as well as giving me some information about typically the best gems to use so I was able to make this guide for you guys as soon as possible. I hope you all learned something from watching this, and please look forward to my future content covering super bosses, time attack, and character guides pretty soon. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and as always, have a wonderful day.